let's start where we should always start, and that's prayer. So Heavenly Father, I pray. I thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for our singing, the choir, our congregational singing. I thank you for the service this morning. I thank you for tonight, Father. I pray that you give me clarity of word, clearness of mind, and obedience of heart. I pray that you let me give your word, not mine, your knowledge, not mine, your wisdom, not mine, for I have none, Father, but you do. I pray, Father, that what we learn tonight will be your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <sighs> Titus 3, 1 through 11. It, um, it's an interesting uh, subject tonight. It is... It is, of course, I wouldn't be set right and queued up right. Ah, oh, Bob. I think Miss Linda may be correct. I think maybe the electronics are overrated. What do you think, Miss Linda? Opening slide. Can a Christian lose their salvation? I was going to take a poll, but I decided against it. It's mixed feelings on that. I've got several things in front of me, the most important being the Bible. But I've got a Christian denominational chart. It's a very thick book. It lists every, well, actually, it's a religious comparison chart that lists all the different religions and the comparisons, how they stack up. But the Christian denominational chart is, is what I wanted to uh, point out to you. You can find all these if you're on the internet at www.religionfacts.com. It's a great site. It, it is many hours of research. But before we do that, I want to read you. I want to read you. Um, it's in Matthew 7, and I'm going to start with verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad fruit cannot bear good fruit. Let me repeat that. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruits, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the, he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me, notice the word many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your, in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Now that's the word of God. And we'll tie into that in just a little bit. But we have this question come up two weeks ago, come up in uh, Bible study on Tuesday night. Can a Christian lose their salvation? I already knew what I believe to be the truth biblically because I had to answer this question and Here's what I wrote in my notes. This is a question that comes up from time to time. Here's a reply I gave to a church member several years ago. Hi, in their name. I found this information while researching your question in Bible study. It didn't come up in that Bible study. I will one day work this into a sermon, but I don't know when. The Lord will tell me the right time, so I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, Brother Bob. Well, I worked it into a sermon because it's the right time. It was brought to me. By the class, we talked about it, and God just told me that we need to look at this issue. It's time that we look at whether a Christian can lose their salvation. And Titus 3, 1 through 11 is a scripture I want to look at. Starting with verse 1. Remind the people to be subject to rules and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be preachable and con peaceable and considerate, and preachable too, would be nice, and always be gentle towards everyone. At one time, 
We too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all the kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness of and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that have, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once, then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful, sinful, and they are self-condemned. Wow. That's with what we read in Matthew, where many will say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Now we get into Titus 3, 1 through 11, and it says that not to have anything to do with the divisive people because they're self-condemned already. That makes it kind of sound bad for not losing salvation. But the whole thing hinges upon what is a Christian. What does that mean? It means many things to many people. A lot of people say, if you're an American, you're a Christian. American, America is a Christian nation. How many's heard that? Everybody in this room. America is a Christian nation. That's not true. We were founded upon Christian principles. That does not make us Christian. That would be akin to believing that everybody that is in the Middle East is a Muslim. That's not true. We cannot identify a person's religion by their nationality, although they, nationalities may have more of one than another. Here's what a Christian is. A Christian is a person, any nationality, who has, by faith, received and fully trusted in Jesus Christ as the Savior, the only Savior. No other saviors. <coughs> John 3. <coughs> you know what? I don't have Caleb here. I get way behind. John 3.16. Anybody ever heard of that one? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever... Notice that whoever thing? Uh, do you see whatever American whatever, anything you want to add to that, but whoever or whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So that's a guarantee right there. Then we get Ephesians 2. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God. So what do we know about salvation so far? It's through grace, it's a gift from God, okay, and that we do that by believing on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and we have eternal life. The confusion comes in the word Christian. That's where we get really messed up. Christian is not just a person who has said a prayer. You know, a lot of times I'll ask somebody, are you a Christian? Here's the answers I get. Yeah, I walked down the aisle once. Yeah, okay. I talked to Jesus once. I said, Jesus, come into my heart. Okay. I've been in church all my life. Okay. My mother had me baptized. My father had me baptized when I was an infant. You okay. None of those make you a Christian. None of those. We start by coming usually down an aisle, but it's not necessary. Um, I've had people come to know the Lord in my office, behind closed doors. We just kneel right there. And they come to know the Lord. There's sometimes not a, a walk in ball. It's more than a prayer. It has to be a 
acceptance totally of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Not necessarily that you understand every aspect of it. It's hard for an eight, eight-year-old or a nine-year-old or sometimes a 50-year-old to understand all the aspects of what it means to accept Christ, but it's more than a prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. If that's as far as it goes, you're not a Christian. I'm sorry. You're not. You might think you are. You might hope you are. You might want to believe you are, but you're not a Christian. There's more to it than that. So the question is, can a Christian lose their salvation? This is someone who has believed in the Son of God. This is someone who has followed the Son of God, Jesus Christ, been accepted by God, and all these other things that we read in Titus has happened to them. Now that's a Christian. Can that person lose their salvation? I'm going to cut to the end and I'm going to give you a cheater. The answer is no. Now, there are theologists, there are denominations, and there's probably half the Christian population that disagrees with me fully on that. There are many educated people that disagree with me on that. When we get through with this tonight, see if you disagree. Let's look and see what does our Bible say. First of all, a Christian is a new creation. That's what we're told. We're told that in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a Christian, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. The very first thing we know that if you are a Christian, if you've been accepted and glorified and saved by God through Jesus Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone. It does not exist no more. The new is here. So that's a fact. We're an entirely new creation. For a Christian to lose salvation, we would have to be reversed into the old creation. We could not lose our, creation, or our salvation and still be that new creation. So that means that God would have to retrofit us back to what we were. We can't be this new creation if we can lose our salvation. Because a new salvation is what makes us a new creation. That's one little point. First Peter, for you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, we find out that we were redeemed by the blood of Christ. We were purchased by the blood of Christ. God, through his grace, sent Jesus Christ and purchased me from being lost. Purchased you. So we've been bought by a price. We're servants of God if we're a Christian. Now think about it. You think God's going to return his purchase and ask for his money back? To lose salvation, that would have to make that invalid. God's purchase would have to be voided out. God purchases us. He said we're his. He bought us with a price, Jesus Christ. Now you tell me you can lose salvation? He's got to revert you back to your old creation, and he's got to return you. He's got to get that price back. Because if that price did not pay for you, he has to, or that's not true, one or the other. A Christian is justified. Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are justified through our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We're a new creation. We've been bought with a price. And now we're justified. Since now we have been justified by his blood, how much, more shall we, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So we're not only a new creation, we're not only justified, bought with a price, we're saved from God's wrath because of this. Do you think God's going to refund, get his money back, make me an old creation, and put the wrath upon me?
Romans 5.10. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through, light, through his life? Not only is this so, but it, we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We're reconciled with God. So if I'm justified, I'm a new creation, I've been bought by blood, and I'm, I'm reconciled with God, that means I never sin, right? Because if I sinned, I'd lose my salvation. There are people that preach that. If you sin, you lose your salvation. No, I'm reconciled with God. Do I have to seek forgiveness? You betcha. But do I lose my salvation? No. For a Christian to lose salvation, God would have to go back on his word. He'd have to undeclare what he previously declared. He would have to go back and change what he did. This is a Christian. This is someone who's been redeemed by the blood of Christ, been justified, reconciled. This is someone that has been purchased. This is not someone who lives in a Christian nation, who's attended church all their life, who maybe made a prayer or walked down an aisle one time. We have to get the identity of a Christian firmly in our brain. Because there are many, many that will go to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have I not cast out demons, prophesied in your name? Depart from me. And he's going to say, because I never knew you. You have to know Christ not to lose salvation. But if you know Christ, you're a Christian. Does it sound like God would go back on his word to any of you? Does it sound like God would change his mind? Take you back because you didn't fit? I want a different size Bob. I, I don't want this one no more. Does that sound right? I'm not making light of it. I'm making light of the people that tell me I can lose my salvation and my father who's redeemed me. Christian has promised eternal life. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever, uh, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? You guys know the words. What does he have? Amen. Eternal life, everlasting life. That's a promise from God. Eternal life's a promise. It's forever. It's with God in heaven. You believe and you will have eternal life. For a Christian to lose salvation, no, it's underlined there. For a Christian to lose salvation, eternal life would have to be taken away. God would have to say, you are no longer reconciled, you're no longer a new creature, I'm no longer paid the uh, blood of Christ for you, you're no longer sanctified, justified, and you no longer have eternal life. Hmm. The Christian has promised to live forever, how can God take that away? Romans 8.30. And those he predestined. That's another tricky little word and theological little maze. But anyhow, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. You, as a Christian, are glorified. I don't know about you. There's some days I look in that mirror and I don't feel so glorious. I don't feel so justified. I feel kind of like, have I ever disappointed God in a, such a way? And the answer is yes. That doesn't change God's promise to me. None of that takes my salvation. Well, I can lose my joy. I can even cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved. Justification is declared at the moment of faith. At that moment, and I don't know when it is for you, but at that moment when you realize and believe in your heart. Now, Brother Bob, I believe in my heart, but sometimes I have questions. God's not talking about a brain knowledge. He's not talking about an intellectual knowledge. He's talking about believing and the faith that's in your heart, in your soul, in your being. I believe God. I don't always understand everything about God. 
I believe God. I trust God. Doesn't mean that I can sit down and have a debate with a, a super theologian and come out on the winning side. <laughs> They'd eat me alive. But that's okay, because I got God. I'm like that child. Na 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 na. God says it's true. And your mother wears combat boots. You know, it's it's well, does he not tell us to come as children? Why would I be able to give a, a, a learned knowledge from some Ivy League school when all I need to do is tell them what God said and those he predestined. That's me. I'm predestined. God knew that I was going to spend eternity in heaven. God knew when I was a teenager not being so glorified that I was going to be preaching one day. God knows what you're doing and going to be doing. He knows the end. When people say that God doesn't predestine, God does. We're told that God's desire is for everyone to be saved. But with God's knowledge, he knows who will be. That's all that means. It's not that you don't have a choice. You do. God just knows the choice you make. Well, that ain't fair. Why should God? I'm sorry. Can't get into that. Can't explain that. I can only tell you here's what God says. For those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. It's at the moment of faith. Glorification is guaranteed for all those whom God justifies. And that means we're going to receive, receive our perfect resurrected body, our glorified body. I have a glorified body. I no longer will have a human body. I will have a glorified body. If a Christian can lose their salvation, then Romans 8.30 is an error. Wesley once said, if there's one single error in the Bible, there might as well be a thousand. If there's one single error in the Bible, there might as well be a thousand. There is no error in God's word. Now, we have errors in the way that we understand God's word sometimes, but it, there's no error in his word. For us to lose salvation... Romans 8.30 would have to be an error. It's abundantly clear to me that a Christian cannot lose salvation. Most, if not all, of what the Bible says happens when we receive Christ would have to be invalidated. He'd have to turn it back. We could not continue like we were. That means, to me, that those that might sincerely believe they're saved better recheck their commitment to God, better recheck their salvation plan with God. If people can prophesize and throw out demons in God's name and, and, and do all these other things and not be saved, I don't know what their thoughts were. But I do know that I have a relationship with God. Here's another fact, too. I don't know if you do. I have no way of knowing if you do. You have no way of knowing if I do. I know and you know what your relationship is with God. But one day, the Lamb will open up the book of life and see if your name's in there. That's when we will know who are the Christians. Not until then. I can't prejudge it. I can't look at somebody and say, they can't be a Christian. Look at the way they live. Or, wow, look how they live. They have to be a Christian. We sometimes get fooled by these outer appearances. God looks at the heart and the soul. We look at the exterior. We look at, you know, when God was trying to choose a king for Israel, he was not looking at the exterior. He was not looking at David's older brothers. He was waiting for that little shepherd to come out of the fields, what he was looking for. God knows what he wants and who is his. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. Nothing can separate us whatsoever. We are permanently 
entrusted to God through Christ. John 10, 28. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. How does it get any clearer than that? How does it get plainer than that? I give them eternal life. Okay, what's it take to get eternal life? A, you have to believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God that was sent, died, resurrected for your sin. You have to accept that. You have to serve Christ. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have been given eternal life. And they shall never perish. That's not, they might not, probably won't. They shall never. And no one, angels, demons, heights and depths, will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Not only are we given to Christ, we're in God's hands. God, the creator of the universe. God, the, the being, the being that made me in the image of him. The being that made me. Let's make man in our image. Male and female, he made man. And yet I have people saying, Bob, you can lose your salvation. I usually don't react violently, but I want to call him a liar. I want to call him a deceiver. I want to call him ignorant of God's word. Sorry. If you believe you can lose salvation, you need to have a long talk. God is both willing and able to guarantee and maintain our salvation. Jude 24, 25. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before the glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Is, uh, to the only God our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and, what, for the next three months, six months? What's it say? Forevermore. Forevermore. Friends, I'm convinced in my heart and my soul that if you are a Christian, you've trusted in the blood of Christ, his resurrected, physical resurrected body, not some spiritual metamorphosis thing, but his, spirit, his, his physical resurrected body, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, came, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried, and arose on the third day, sits at the right hand of God, and is in heaven preparing a place for you, you're saved, and you will see that place. If you believe anything else, I'm not sure what's going to happen to you. Probably that depart from me thing will happen. But if you believe what I just said, you are a Christian. And if you are a Christian, you are saved. Now, does that mean we need to be constantly forgiven for when we mess up? You betcha. It's just the analogy is like our children. My child cannot be my child because they mess up. I can't make it not my child. It's my child. And if my child messes up and comes to me and says, Dad, I'm sorry, I forgive my child. And we have a father-son relationship with God. It's, it, he builds that relationship, I think, and explains it that way so we can understand exactly what it is. Could any of you take the life of your child because of something they messed up? Me neither. You think God will take mine because I mess up? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that your words, not mine, your thoughts, not mine, your love, certainly not mine, has shown through on this message, on these scriptures. I pray that each person here will reflectively think, study, Pray and prove to their self that what I said is true. That if they've trusted you through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, they're a Christian and they're saved. And we will spend eternity together. Father, I also pray if there's anyone with any doubt, that they're not sure, any question, that they feel bold enough to ask me.
and we will pray and search together so that we can satisfy their need. I pray this in Jesus' name, his holy and mighty name, and thank you, Father.